Heyo everyone, I'm Kronos, and this is a speedrunning tutorial video on how to set up your game and everything else needed for Halo Combat Evolved on the Master Chief Collection on PC. This tutorial has a lot of information, so I have timestamps in the description that will let you go and find what you need. For people that are doing this more casually and for fun, I would recommend watching these parts. If you want to submit speedruns to haloruns.com, I would watch these parts. And if you are trying to go for world records or top times and are already familiar with the basics and want to learn more, watch these parts. So you may ask why you should follow this tutorial. So I have been speedrunning Halo CE for 5 years and have held multiple world records in the game, including the CE Easy full game world record, the top 3 time in CE Legendary full game, and top times for every individual level of the game. This tutorial contains all of the knowledge that I have gathered during my many years of play to help those that want to learn how to speedrun the game, whether if it's to get world records, get the speedrunning achievement, or for those that enjoy learning about the cool things that speedrunners can do. Before we get started, if you're watching this video, you've probably come across it from the Halo Runs website. If you haven't, then you should go check out haloruns.com to see speedruns of your favorite Halo games. Our community is very welcoming to newcomers, and many people are around to help answer your questions about anything in Halo speedrunning and more. Make sure to join the Halo Runs Discord as well as it contains a bunch of additional links for the speedruns that you want to learn more about. The link to the Discord and many other tools I'll talk about will also be in the description below. The first thing we're going to do is set up Live Split. Live Split is a timing tool that is used for many speedruns including Halo CE. Go to livesplit.org downloads to install Live Split. You'll see two links, and you just need to download the top link right here. When you download it, you will get a zip file, I've split of the version, and then you just unzip the file and you'll get a folder. The folder will have a bunch of files, but the only important one that we want to deal with is the main exe. So make sure to run it as administrator and you'll get a timer to appear on the screen. So when you get this timer, right click it and click Edit Splits. The Splits editor will pop up and you want to type in Halo the Master Chief Collection up top here in the game name. You'll notice that when you type everything correctly, Auto Splitting for MCC PC by Burnt Will appear right here and you'll want to click activate to make the auto splitter work. So when you click it you'll notice that this pop-up might happen and what this is saying is it wants you to use in-game time which is how Halo CE is timed as the main timing method. So click yes to change the timing method to game time and then if you want to change it to real-time, you can do that with compare against real-time right here. For full game runs, you do not need to do anything else apart from adding splits to your timer. So this can be done by clicking these insert buttons to add splits, and you can just name the splits whatever segments you want. And for Halo CE, there are 10 levels, so you would add 10 splits for all of the segments here. For individual level runs, or ILs for single level runs, click settings and there is an individual level mode. So if you want to set up splits for specific levels, you also can click on this check mark for split on unique loading duns. And you'll need to head over to tinyurl.com slash bspsplit, which will be linked in the description, to see where it splits on the levels. You can also name the splits accordingly as well. 
On the screen is the total number of splits required for each individual level speedruns for loading done splits. Now that live split is set up, you are free to start speedrunning with the timer. To make the game work with live split, you'll need to run the game in Easy Anti-Cheat Disabled mode, or EAC Off. For both of these applications, they're normally the second option on the menu. Now we're going to set up Halo to match what most speedrunners will use. The main settings that I would change are the field of view. I set both of these to 86, as most of my lineups use 86 FOV. You can change these to be higher or lower if you want, but just note that the lineups that you do might not work if you have a different FOV. The other thing that is important is frame rate. I have my frame rate set to 120 FPS, but for certain manips that are done in the game, such as keys manip, the RNG can be affected by your frame rate. So if you want to use a different frame rate, you can, and you'll just have to find a manip that works for your specific frame rate and computer. In terms of controls for Halo CE, mouse and keyboard is preferred over controller, since teleports and other tricks are easier to perform on the mouse and keyboard. The most important thing when you are playing on mouse and keyboard is your mouse sensitivity, since in-game the teleports are determined by this setting. There are a couple sensitivities that are easy and best to use, but the most preferred I would say is 3.1. The other two sensitivities I would recommend is 5.0 or 2.1. Anything else is probably not viable because of some teleports such as the Ma Cafe teleport. If you can have a mouse that can change its DPI, I would recommend changing that DPI so that you are comfortable in-game with whatever mouse sensitivity you choose. And the mouse's DPI will not affect the teleports, it's only this mouse sensitivity number. For other keyboard bindings for CE, uh, you just want to make sure that you have some buttons that are easy to reach, such as your jump, crouch, and especially your throw grenade button, since there's a lot of grenade jumps within the game that you would need to perform. The last setting that I would also change is game music. Make sure you have game music set to a value where you, you can hear the in-game music. This is because of one trick, which is Banshee out of level, where you rely on an audio cue for the game music. To record your gameplay with the timer, I would recommend using OBS Studio. There are other streaming and recording software that you can also use, such as XSplit or Streamlabs OBS, but the one I recommend the most is OBS Studio because it is the most simple. I won't go over how to install OBS, but I'll provide a link in the description of how to download it. Here are a couple speedrunning tricks that are used in CE. The first one I'll go over is Backpack Reloading. So when you have a weapon that is not fully loaded and has ammo that you can reload, if you double tap your reload button and then switch to your secondary weapon, you'll be able to reload it while having it inside of your backpack. So if I double tap R and switch weapons, you can switch back and your weapon is fully reloaded. You have to make sure that you wait for the amount of time the weapon needs to reload for it to work. So if you switch back too quickly, it will not reload. But if you wait long enough for the assault rifle's animation of the reload, it will become back to fully loaded. The next trick I'll talk about is the double melee. So in this game, there's a set timer for how long you can melee between. But if you throw your grenade during the melee animation, it cancels the animation and lets you melee again. So if you do melee, throw grenade, and melee, you can see the second melee was a lot faster. You can do this very quickly, 
and it makes your melee do basically double damage. It is very uncommon to use it, but in some niche situations you can find it helpful. The last glitch I'll talk about is the rocket storage glitch. So this is generally done with rocket launchers, because rockets don't have as much ammo, but you can do this with any projectile weapon. So this is done very similarly to backpack reloading. So instead of double tapping reload and switching to your secondary weapon, you can double tap reload and drop your main weapon. So notice how my assault rifle only has 150 bullets in the clip. But, so when I reload, it should be less than that. However, if you double tap reload and drop the weapon for another one, you can hear the assault rifle reload on the ground, and when you pick it back up, notice how I still have 150 bullets in the chamber. Next, I'll go over a bit of general information that you can use in your speedruns. On the screen are the speed values for general player movement. Notice that strafing in any direction is slower than holding forwards, so make sure that you try to hold forwards as much as possible during the run when going from one spot to another. In Halo CE, it is faster to keep jumping while moving in any direction up and down slopes. This is because slopes slow down player movement. However, the difference in speed is fairly minor, so it is not crucial to do unless you're going for world record times. But it is easy enough to do anyways, especially during long walking sections, so you should try to do it as much as possible anyway. In Halo CE, your own grenades deal different amounts of damage depending on the difficulty of the game and the distance the grenades are away from you. On easy, your own grenades deal much more damage to yourself than on legendary. On easy, grenades generally require full health and shields in order to do a grenade jump, while on legendary, there is much more leeway in the amount of damage you can take. Plasma grenades will also strip you of all of your overshield if you have it, so be careful. Carrier Flood and Halo CE have weird properties with their explosion damage. On easy, you shouldn't shoot carriers nearby you, while on legendary, you want to shoot them. This is because the explosion damage when shooting the carrier is amplified on easy, while on legendary, it is decreased. When you pick up an overshield, you gain invincibility during the shield charge up time, allowing you to do some cool tricks with grenades that you normally wouldn't be able to do. This charge time is about 2 seconds, so make sure if you're going to use this invincibility to do it within this time frame. Crouch sliding is a mechanic in Halo CE which lets you build up speed when crouching at specific times when going down steep enough slopes. You can do this by jumping and then tapping crouch at specific parts of the slide. This is also only a minor speed increase, which is only crucial to do when going for world record times, but it can be useful to know. Fall damage in Halo CE can be slightly mitigated by crouching at the right time. This is useful for landing from long drops. However, if you uncrouch before landing, you will instead increase the amount of damage you take, so make sure you crouch later rather than earlier to avoid doing this. The Halo Runs community has many tools for speedrunning Halo games. This includes a checkpoint manager and a checkpoint and core trainer. These make your speedruns much easier to practice by letting you use your checkpoints and core saves that you can save and return to when you want to use them. Note that the use of these tools is not allowed during runs for submission to the Halo Runs website. First, I'll go over the checkpoint and core trainer. So when you run it, you should be able to see this program that pops up. Uh, make sure you have Cheat Engine installed and you are on the right version of the game, otherwise you will get an error. And you can see that you have a hotkey and a bunch of effects. You can change these hotkeys to whatever bind you want it to be. So you press these three dots and you can set the hotkey for that. And you have all these functionalities. 
So if I were to press F1 in game, you can see I get a custom checkpoint. And then if I were to press F2, I will instantly checkpoint revert to where I was before. The next ones are core saves and core loads. These are similar to checkpoints, but they can't get overridden by in-game checkpoints, which makes it nice for practice. These are also used for storing your saves into an external library with the checkpoint manager if you want to do that later. And then there's all of these other functionalities. So for F5, this makes you invincible. So when you turn it on, you no longer take any damage in the game. For F6, this is speed hack. It will make your game run faster, as you can see, so you just speed up whatever's in the game. So the next thing I want to showcase is Medusa. So right now I have Medusa on, and there should be a bunch of enemies in the next section. So what Medusa does is it kills whatever enemies are around you. You can see that the Banshee just died right there, falling out of the sky once it comes within your vicinity. You can see this happen with a bunch of the enemies here as well. So once I walk close enough, you can see that all these grunts just died, the elite just died, and this just makes it easier to pass through certain sections. The last thing I want to showcase here is bull practice mode. So this is used for practicing Banshee out of level on two betrayals. So if you have it ticked on, you should be able to see on the top left the number of triggers that you need to hit within the level. So once you start doing the trick, you should be able to see the triggers progress. So after hitting this first trigger, you can see that the exclamation marks show up, and then you can hit all of the other triggers of the level by following whether or not you have hit it or have not, and you can see the number tick up as you go through and progress to all of the other triggers on the level. Now I'll go over the Halo Checkpoint Manager. So when you download it, you should have this Checkpoint Manager EXE. Uh, you need to make sure you run it as administrator, and if you don't, then it won't work. So right here, you can see we have the Checkpoint Manager. So you can see I made a couple core saves and everything. So I would recommend using Cheat Engine with this if you do want to do it, but it's not necessary. But here we can see I can click the load less checkpoint. Let's say we're like right here, like in the level. So if I want to go practice a trick such as the Warthog Flick, I can click inject and core load and that will teleport me to this part of the level. So uh, to make a checkpoint save or a core save, as I said before, it is F3. So when you press F3 it creates a core save and you can see your currently loaded core save is right here. So if you want to save this new save file, you press dump and then you can name it whatever and then you can just return to it whenever you want so if I wanted to go to another save once again you can inject and core load injecting the save will just make it so that when you do a core load for instance for your checkpoint uh, save trainer you can see that my core save is right here so now I can practice tricks like stick stack. And if you want to rename, delete, move your files around, you can do all of that. You can see I have all my save files in this course save folder. And you can move around these files within the folder itself that you downloaded it to. In Halo CE, some versions of the game are not as viable for speedrunning as other versions. This is due to some game changes that can make changes within this campaign, 
and even though they are minor, they can affect the speed run. for instance, changing teleport lineups, or RNG manipulation, or some other weird factors that can happen. So, to downpatch a CE to an earlier version of the game, Wacky, one of the members of the Halo Runs community, made a guide on how to downpatch the game. And I have the guide pulled up right here. So, as you can see, there's a bunch of instructions on how to do it using tools like this Depot Downloader or using the Steam Depot Down Patcher. And you can see that what is offered here, we have uh, Season 7 Depots and everything that can be used. If you want to switch whatever uh, manifests you want to use, you can go to the actual Steam database and look at under patches. And you can see all of the patches of the game. For instance, if you want to download a Season 8 patch, you can go to this date and you can see the manifest ID that was changed. So in this case, for the campaign, we want to change the manifest ID to this value instead of the one that is here for Season 7 if you want to download a Season 8 file. I won't go over how to do all of this. Uh, the best way to do it is to just go through these instructions on your own time. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the Halo Runs Discord on how to downpatch. That's all for the tutorial, hope you all enjoyed it. In the next video, I'll dive into the first level of the game, The Pillar of Autumn. Special thanks to Burnt, Scales, and Wacky for their earlier setup tutorials, guides, and work which are featured in the video, along with other members of the Halo Runs community. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more, and leave a comment to let me know if you have any feedback that you have to give me. Until then, have fun speedrunning Halo CE.